I'm um, Irini Papadimitriou and uh, I'm the head of new media arts development here, so I'm responsible for the exhibition program. So yeah, I'm responsible for the uh, for the exhibitions uh, program here, including also a perform digital performance festival, which I introduced in November last year. Uh, so I'm going to talk about these. Uh, so basically, um, Waterman's. Uh, sorry, I should say also that I'm a digital programs manager at the VNA. So I'm going to talk about both um, uh, my, my bo both positions and uh, some projects that are re relevant to um, ICT and Art Connect. Um, so at Watermans, we've got a year-round program uh, of visual arts, performance, film, outdoor and participatory events. Um, we saw uh, small installations around the building apart from the main exhibition space. And um, we are particularly interested in showing new work and commissioning new work and uh, kind of work with the artist uh, through the, the development phase of a new, new project to show it here. Uh, so we had a series of um, residencies, um, apart from the, uh, the exhibition program as well. Um, so I started, um, I first came here in 2000, I think it was, yeah, end of 2009. And um, this was, Unleashed Devices was my first exhibition here. And um, the reason why I was interested in, in, in technology was uh, because of all these exciting collaborations happening because of the, I was always, um, I, I was kind of meeting artists who would collaborate with scientists, with technologists, with um, other artists who had all with, with programmers, etc., to develop some really exciting projects. So um, I thought that the, it would make sense for my first uh, kind of exhibition here to I go with this, so which was looking at DIY media, uh, reappropriation, hacking, open source, but also loads of collaborations. Most of the projects were about collaborative uh, work. Uh, so these are just a few examples of some of the, the work that we had around the building. And um, the, the top one is uh, a robotic installation uh, upstairs outside the, the, the loos, and where we replace the loose the, the toilet sign with this robotic installation, and then when somebody entered the uh, um, the, uh, the, the, the female or the, the male toilets, then the robot would just quickly draw like a male or female sign. And so that was one of the projects, and that was from uh, Goldsmith um, uh, University uh, between uh, two researchers there. So um, at the same time, that was also a great uh, opportunity for us to work with many universities uh, around London and present also research uh, there. Um, this was uh, another project that came uh, a bit later in 2012 with the opportunity of the, um, of the games in London. So we wanted to kind of explore this idea of collaboration in a, in a more international level. So uh, I decided to um, kind of work this idea of the festival but uh, make it uh, like use, occupy the building and the gallery space. So uh, in some sort of a festival format which would run uh, the whole year in uh, of 2012 and invite uh, international artists as well as uh, UK uh, based artists to some to discussions but also to uh, a series of installations and um, at the same time we would um, of course work with the uni many universities we had our main partner was Goldsmiths and uh, Janice Jeffries is here today who was one of our main collaborators on this project so we uh, kind of um, we run uh, a series of, um, of, of uh, discussions which kind of they are all collected in touch and go this uh, special issue of Leonardo Electronic Almanac and uh, we engaged students and academics and the artists in discussions throughout the year um, and exploring of course all these ideas of participation, interactivity, art, technology, collaborations, uh, etc. Uh, so this was one, just to give you an example, that was just one of the, of the big commissions that we had right outside the entrance of Watermans. And uh, this, was a big, uh, this was a new commission that it took us uh, quite a long time to put together, but uh, it was um, a collaboration between uh, light artist Felicide Destiendor and uh, Bonfiglioli, which is uh, a big company working with uh, motors and uh, building this kind of uh, huge um, like, like wind power uh, structures. So this was like, a, I don't, I'm sorry you can't see it very well, but it was uh, like a big sculpture uh, with mirror plates on top that would um, turn around uh, based on mathematical kind of uh, 
like, uh, yes, equations of C made and then create these uh, kind of geometrical uh, shapes in the sky. And we also work with a laser company here in, in, uh, in, in the UK. Um, so, um, apart from using, of course, the gallery space, I was very interested um, in working with performance, and uh, because many uh, many of the artists that I've been working with, especially with um, a background in uh, like interactive uh, installations or immersive installations, they have been collaborating a lot with dancers and performers. So I thought that it would make sense to kind of invite people like this to uh, present work as well. And kind of continue the discussions or take the discussions of this level in, uh, ter in the terms of performance. O also it would make sense because Watermans has a history in uh, presenting theater uh, work and performance for much longer than the, the gallery space exists. So this was uh, one of the projects from uh, Brunel and uh, the uh, DAP lab with Johannes Beringer and Michel Danzu. And they have, they, they have been exploring in their work um, uh, art, design, fashion, uh, technology and dance um, collaboration. So they, they are bringing loads of different uh, artists together. And it was, this work was, um, for the time being, was uh, presented here. Um, and it, was, it was still a work in progress when we uh, showed it here. But it was, great. it was very interesting because they, um, they had been um, involving in this piece many artists who were also part of the, uh, of the, of the year-long festival that we had here. So for example, this, I don't know if you can see that uh, like round uh, kind of object that the dancer uh, holds. This is like a sound responsive um, like object that was designed by um, Mike Blow, who had also uh, been involved in the discussions here about uh, gesture and uh, interactivity and, uh, uh, and participation. So it was really good to bring them all back in and for, for different projects. Um, so this, in a way, uh, helped me develop, just uh, understand that there was, uh, it would make sense to maybe do something uh, bigger around performance and technology and kind of you know, just uh, formalize this um, idea or, or the, the, this uh, part of the program where we would have a more regular event to bring in also performers, not just uh, visual artists and designers and technologists. So um, in, in November uh, last year, um, I started this program uh, called Digital Performance Festival, and it's, just, it's going to be now an annual event. So um, th this was very interesting because it came also, it didn't just, it, it, it's not the only festival that we decided to do here. There was, it uh, came out of uh, a series of weekenders that we decided to to, to, to start uh, from the mid of 2013 and uh, it was actually um, a great way for the uh, for collaboration within the institution so it was not just about bringing artists from outside or for just me uh, working together with uh, designers or artists or performers but it was also for within the the, the, the uh, organization so uh, working together with my colleagues to program events like this so it was um, these weekenders were like a, a great uh, opportunity for us to come together and and just uh, work more closely and uh, bring in also our regular kind of um, uh, colleagues together. So, uh, so the festival is just was like a first kind of attempt to explore uh, how uh, uh, how performers, dancers, so, uh, musicians, uh, sound artists, etc., work together and uh, technology. So it was so that it had a lot of um, kind of performances, but also. Uh, like pop-up installations around the building. So Hidden Fields was one of the examples which um, is using uh, computational physics but also uh, um, yeah, state-of-the-art computing and it explores, it brings uh, the, uh, the dancers, uh, it kind of yeah, interprets the dancers' movements. Uh, in, uh, it, it makes this invisible field visible, this invisible field of, of, of energy. Um, and this was uh, another example of uh, one of the installations that we had upstairs, and it was uh, a project called Psychasthenia by Joyce Rodinsky and Victoria Zabo from South Carolina University. And um, the, it's, um, the, it, it was an immersive game uh, where you kind of you have to you start you kind of start from um, a, a hospital uh, or a, yes, and then you have to work your way out. To, uh, to society and prove that you are worth to go back to working. 
uh, it was a very interesting, it was, we had a great response for this project. Um, another, uh, another area like of the program that where we, I have been exploring uh, part, uh, collaboration was not just uh, between artists and technologies, but also with the public and um, students uh, or people interested in specific things that we do here. So last year I started um, a series of exhibitions uh, which are um, kind of exploring this idea of the space as a lab, of the, or the exhibition as a lab, not just not, not the gallery. So, um, so I started with this project called the Isoculture with, um, uh, by uh, Michael Barton and Mitzi Conita. And what we wanted to do was to, um, first we wanted to kind of use the gallery space as a lab to, um, to imagine that we, uh, that we have run out of resources in the, uh, in the very distant future. So we are, we are trying to build this uh, isoculture, which is a world where we are cut off from everything, from the environment, so we have only our human, our body to survive. So, um, so this was so it was set up. We set up the gallery um, in in a way where a group of people would come every week over uh, 13 weeks, and then they would work together with the artists. And then we had also experts from, uh, for example, the um, European Space Agency designers or uh, doctors from NASA who had been in the uh, Concordia station at the Antarctica and or uh, people, for example, who have done a lot of research around uh, Biosphere or Eden Project uh, scientists. So they all to work together during the duration of the, of the project. And then at the end, and they, they produced like a series of artifacts and different kind of uh, workshops. So these are just some of the examples of the, some examples from the artifacts that they produce. So for example, they were looking at um, using uh, human breast milk to make cheese, or they were looking at like future food if we are cut off from the environment or other resources, so for example, like this, uh, this um, sort of, if we can call it like plate and cup, and it, it's not perfectly plate and cup, but then it's made from, again, casing plastic made from human uh, breast milk, and or uh, synthetically engineered yeast, um, or the other devices, for example, this mask to capture C uh, CO2 while um, the uh, inhabitants of uh, the isoculture would uh, would, would sleep, um, or um, like something like this trachea uh, enhancement. So uh, we have a publication actually coming up from this project because the um, the, the participants um, made uh, some very interesting stories. So they they didn't just design um, like products or like I don't know like devices that would be used in agriculture, but they also uh, kind of did a lot of research around how people would behave if they are cut off from the environment, how they would, uh, for example, if they are um, kind of re our relation, their, their relationships would uh, change. So I have to run a bit now because, so this is uh, uh, Anna, Anna Dimitrius' um, exhibition, which is now on display upstairs, is one, is, is the second exhibition in the series of a lab. So from next month, we're going to start again on Saturdays, uh, this series of, um, uh, of workshops uh, for um, the group of people who will be here every week to, to look around, to look at art and bacteria and um, produce work. So I'm, I'm just going to go quickly some um, examples from my work at the v &A. Um, so uh, at the VNA, we launched the digital programs uh, team in 2008. Um, we were our team does has different our program has different strands. So we have a lot of workshops. We're based in the learning department, so we do a lot of uh, engagement with for the public and workshops to help them uh, understand how artists and designers today are using technology in their work or how these collaborations happen between scientists, uh, uh, technologies, uh, artists, etc. And also, uh, so we, but also uh, we are very interested in not just final work, but also processes. And um, I thought because I, when when I started um, with the digital programs team there, I thought that um, what the, the VNA is the National Museum of Art and Design, so it's very important for uh, such a big museum like that to not only show uh, work by, or final work by established artists, but also to kind of support younger artists to show um, uh, how collaborations happen, to support open source, but also to kind of uh, enable this co-creation to take place. Um, 
So uh, the, I'm going to just quickly talk to you about uh, two major events that I'm running there. The, one is the annual festival, the Digital Design Weekend, uh, which again is a way to bring in loads of visitors and have all the artists, designers, scientists, technologists there and uh, talk to the public just so that they can meet them, they can understand how they work together, what they do, uh, they, they, they see from final work, but also they, um, they get an understanding of their journey or the process. Uh, of their collaboration, and this was um, uh, th this was uh, the International Space Orchestra um, film that we presented. We had uh, Nelly Ben Hayoun at the VNA uh, with many scientists from NASA and many of the collaborators who took part in the uh, International Space Orchestra. So. Um, yeah, I should say that I've, I've been trying to work around themes for the digital weekend. So uh, last, uh, uh, last September it was, uh, we were exploring collaborations of art, design and science, but before we had uh, themes like Alan Turing's legacy or physicality and technology, because um, I thought that because of the V&A collections it makes sense, which is, includes very, virtually every art form, it's, uh, it's, it makes sense to understand also how a technology is not something on a screen, it's just physical as well. So I'm very interested in the maker culture. So we've been promoting that a lot. So again, Anna is here. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> so this is again from a workshop that uh, we had at the VNA at the Distant Weekend uh, last September on uh, MRSA quilt and bacteria textiles. And um, it was one of the most successful workshops. So, uh, it, and it was a great, uh, it wasn't just Anna there, it was some of the scientists uh, uh, that she's been working with. Uh, so it was a great way to talk to people and then uh, un help them understand uh, how technology kind of, uh, you know, just, uh, and how technology in, in works in microbiology or how art and uh, science, uh, science collaboration to come together. Um, and this is another uh, big collaborative project that we had at the, uh, at the digital weekend, not in September uh, 2013, but the previous year. And this was also a project that was first presented there, and it's called the uh, Algae Opera. And uh, it was by, again, by Michael Barton and Mitzi Konita, who had isoculture at, the, uh, at Watermans. And um, this was something that I've been involved right from the beginning, so this is what I, I'm... I'm trying to kind of uh, to think of myself as a, one of the collaborators for these pro, uh, for these artistic processes as well so and uh, try to work along these uh, projects all the time uh, and this uh, project was um, uh, a big collaboration between Louis Ascroft, the uh, soprano singer, but uh, the, the two designers, uh, Michael and Mitsiko, and game show uh, outpatient, and they, they, they work has been looking at uh, biotechnology and uh, food in the future, or alternative food uh, sources. So they designed this, uh, this uh, costume which uh, Louise is wearing there, and uh, she, she, she was singing, it was basically a performance, so she would sing, and then uh, it was her suit was connected to uh, tanks um, on, on either side uh, of here, and so um, it, her breath, would, the CO2 in her breath would uh, kind of grow algae. So we, would collecting the, we were collecting this algae uh, over the weekend, and then uh, uh, a chef was making sushi, but we couldn't eat it, of course. So, <laughs> not that it wasn't safe, it's not because of the VNA regulation. And this was, uh, this was another big project at, uh, the, at the digital weekend uh, last September, and uh, it was the R&D uh, that we presented, because this is an ongoing research um, between uh, NASA, Ames Research Center, like nine uh, scientists, SETI Institute, uh, and uh, other scientists from this country and uh, universities as well. So it was again some sort of a performance reenacting almost um, Dr. Strange Love. And uh, Dave, you can see David Morris on there uh, from the Carl Sagan Center and, uh, and um, loads of other, like Matthew Linton next to him. And they, they were talking about um, emergency design and emergency procedures uh, in, in the case of a catastrophe. So, uh, so this is, this is uh, 
there, there will be a second part of this project. I think it's being presented uh, in Brussels somewhere, and then it's coming back to the VNA uh, at the in September this year for the digital weekend. And uh, I don't know how much time I've got. Okay, so these are just some other examples, again, looking at robotics. Uh, that was part of the Alan Turing uh, legacy uh, event and uh, new organs of creation, uh, which was looking at how the history of how our body is being trained for, uh, in, in extreme, to extremes to be used as a tool, for example, for dance or, um, or other kind of, or, yeah, or singing, etc. So uh, the artists were proposing, were looking at biotechnology or uh, to kind of, again, how that would transform our body to have, to give artists and designers bigger, uh, like, bigger uh, abilities. Uh, I'll just go through this. So I just want to talk very quickly about this. Um, another thing that I was very interested in, and going back to the maker culture and making and technology, was the uh, idea of the, of the hackathon. So I've been very interested in how hackathons work, but I wanted to kind of to experiment a bit with uh, with making it a bit more public and accessible because uh, the hackathons I've been to uh, were mainly uh, for, me for, um, for men and developers or technologists so they were not, there was not much diversity. So uh, I've been working with the Met Office for a, for a, for a while now, for a, a, about two years and um, they, they started running some hackathon events to uh, raise awareness on climate change. So I decided, so I invited them to the digital weekend and um, we kind of started talking about how we could make um, a hackathon about climate change to um, a, a public event and engage more people. So for example, how we could bring in, uh, I don't know, designers or makers or just the public. So we decided to go with this idea of like linking, uh, just doing something around wearables or, or fashion and, and climate change. So we uh, invited many people from the um, wearable and fashion community, which meant that it became very easy for uh, members of the, res uh, the from, from the, uh, the public who had sewing skills or who had some fashion interest to, to join in and we had about uh, 700 people taking part in this hackathon which was quite ridiculous actually and so we set up some challenges uh, looking at uh, old age and climate but also uh, how fashion um oops sorry that's not <laughs> So uh, yeah, just how and, and, and fashion or, or how fashion, for example, is uh, related to climate change in terms of like where all the production happens, etc. And we had also an open uh, uh, challenge for the public to set up and work around it. And they, there was loads of um, of input from the public uh, during the two the two days that this took place. This is just a photo, and that's just one of the outcomes, which was a temperature dress originally just sewing from the 1900s to 2100 the, um, the change of temperature but what do we want to do with that because this is kind of uh, the amazing thing is that this is going on and so this collaboration still happens uh, is that how we could make a wearable so it's not necessarily a dress it could be something small that people could carry around and collect data um, uh, and this was again it's another event, Digital Futures, which is the, um, apart from the Digital Weekend, is the other ongoing event that I'm running at the VNA and it's looking at uh, collaborations and also how to enable more collaborations. So it's, it's an event specifically for researchers and students, but also for the creative industries and it's looking to bring the two uh, or all of these people together every once a month and it's quite it, it, it takes uh, it's a very flexible format which is kind of contrary to the VNA because it's a very it's very hard to do things in the middle of the gallery so I wanted to kind of create an umbrella event which would kind of easily have different things from showcases to talks uh, round tables etc so the next one is happening on Tuesday and it's uh, a series of discussions and networking event from past participants and these are just some of the examples of uh, one of the sessions which was looking at uh, data, environmental data or city data and we had loads of uh, pop-up installations around the, uh, the Sackler Centre and all, of course the, uh, the teams who had collaborated to make things happen. Um, and I know I'm running, yeah, okay. So sorry, I have to, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> but these are just some of the examples of where collaborations happen at both Watermans and, and the VNA. And uh, what I didn't say was that um, these collaborations don't, 
are, are not possible to be, they're not forced, they just happen naturally over time. So it just takes, the, it's, um, we, we don't have any formal contracts or anything just to say that we are working in partnership or that we're collaborating. It's just that it's just, it, they, they kind of come together after these discussions and then they just, um, I think that's the best way to get them to remain sustainable. And I think I'll just stop here. I'll just leave my contact details in case you want to get in touch. Thank you very much.